And welcome back to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host as always, Litecoin Leader. Today we're talking about a coin that's I, I've been following for years and not many people know about it right now because it's not really on exchanges. It's not. It's it's very hard to obtain. Uh, you could almost call it un unobtainium, but the coin is called Veritasium. And I'll go over what that means, uh, what the project does. But I've been looking at this coin almost the entire time I've been in crypto, maybe about a year in. I think in 2017, 2018, I started looking at Definitely 2017, I started looking at hard because uh, I think Cliff High and a few others were really talking about it and the upside potential and the asymmetric market that Veritasium offered at the time and still offers now. So there's been more news and I will be talking about some of that towards the back end of the video and my conclusion. But for now, let's go over the news, the history, some of the charts, and then we'll talk about the conclusion after all this. Just a quick reminder that nothing in this video is considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Seek out your own advice and do your own diligence, do your own research. So we have to start at the beginning for Veritasium. Veritasium is an older coin, started I believe in 2013 or 2014 by Reggie Middleton. We'll talk about him in a moment. But Veritasium is a word that comes from Latin, a combination of truth or element of truth. And there was a play on the spelling to make it EUM instead of IUM just to make it a little bit different. But you've heard of Project Veritas, that's a different entity altogether. But that's the same origin, truth. So Ver Veritasium, their mission is to tokenize pretty much everything and to, and to make it uh, available through a marketplace, peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for everyone. What that does is that competes with every existing marketplace that's out there. The NASDAQ, the, all the stock exchanges, all of the crypto exchanges. This is the reason why it's very hard to obtain Veritasium because most exchanges don't even want to associate themselves with making Veritasium available. Currently, the price is roughly $20. Um, that has fluctuated a lot since the beginning of the year, but there's been news since December, January that about Veritasium and DeFi, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But the, there's been renewed interest in Veritasium in the last six months because a lot's going on in the world, and Veritasium could be at the center of it. So Veritasium is currently ranked number 480 in the marketplace. Um, there's, there's 100 million coins in existence, but only 2 million, roughly, is a circulating supply. The reason is because of the SEC and what they did several years ago, where they confiscated 98% of what of the circulating supply. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. So it's a very, it's one of the hardest coins to obtain. The places to obtain it, uh, if I jump over in CoinGecko to the places where you can get it, here's the marketplaces. You have Uniswap, which is probably the best way to get it if you can find it. Um, it's not always available, but you can see the 24-hour volume of roughly 1,000 coins have exchanged hands uh, on Uniswap for Veritasium and Ethereum. Um, not a lot. Not a lot of coins. Um, some of them have – Mercatox has two, both the Ethereum and the Bitcoin pair. Again, not many coins there, maybe you know, 60 to 70 a day. Fork Delta would be second place, and then Uniswap version 3. Again, total grand total, you're looking at 30,000 of volume on a $20 coin. That's 1,500 coins a day maximum. Not only is it hard to get, but there's not many people out there selling it. So Veritasium's website, which is veritas.veritasium.com, you can find more about Reggie Middleton. Reggie Middleton is actually a very public figure. Uh, for, for the crypto space, he has puts out lots of videos. He's on Twitter a lot. Uh, he describes himself as a disruptor in chief. He knows he's competing against the marketplaces. He understands what he's doing, but he is a patented founder of DeFi. He's the creator and inventor of decentralized finance. So that's, that's his self-described description. Um, Reggie is not an egotist by any means, but he's very adamant in his convictions. Uh, and he has a patent now on DeFi. He, the patent was granted, I think, last year. That's part of the reason why there's been more um, interest in Veritasium. So the impact of this patent will be a revolution in how financial markets are transacted. Between this and the blockchain, the truth will come out, which means the, uh, the big words like rehypothecation 
and fractional banking. Those things will likely be going away, which scares the bejesus out of the marketplaces that are out there, the banks, the, the NASDAQs, the SEC. All of them are very concerned because the number of shares that are traded in these, even the crypto exchanges, is not true to how many coins really exist. Um, you see in, um, well, let me pull this up for a second. Hold on one second. Let's go to coin market cap for a moment. So if I go down to, I know Litecoin will tell me this one. So here's the market cap. Here's the 24 hour volume. If I go to Litecoin, I know Litecoin will display this pretty well. Litecoin's market cap is roughly $12 billion. The 24 hour volume is allegedly 2.3 billion. That is about 20% of all Litecoin exchanges hands in the last 24 hours. Um, that's highly unlikely. What that really reflects is that that's how many are listed coins or rehypothecated coins uh, that exchanges are saying that exist, but really aren't there. The exchanges make money by trades. They want more and more volume of trades. So the more volume that they can push through the marketplace, uh, such as Binance here, Binance is a market cap of almost 10 trillion, and a third of it traded hands in, in the last 24 hours. Again, that's probably not true. So, I mean, you look at a coin like Theta, where 9 billion in uh, less than less than 1 billion exchanged hands, that seems to be a little bit more realistic seeing with Stellar. Uh, the numbers that some of the exchanges that they push through, um, it's rehypothecated, which is just a fancy word of saying they're trading more coins than exist. So for Litecoin, there may be 100 to 1, for example. I'm just, I don't know what the number is. I'm just guessing. Let's just say it's 10 or 20 to 1. Let's just say, let's say the real volume should be more like 235 million versus, or maybe even 1 million. It shouldn't be more than 10%, more than likely. Because most of the coins, so you see Chainlink is about 1, uh, 10, 1 million, excuse me, 1 billion compared to a 12 billion market cap, less than 10%. That seems to be a more typical number, a more pragmatic number, whereas Binance and Litecoin are over leveraged and over extended in what the volume allegedly represents. And that's probably the exchanges um, masking the fact that they're over inflating the liquidity to get more volume of trades. So how do you avoid this in, in crypto? How do you avoid this in the NASDAQ or uh, where they're, share, share, they're selling more shares than exist on stocks? Um, it happens in, this, in the commodities a lot. That's the whole derivative marketplace as well. I've heard one expert say that for every ounce of gold, 62,000 contracts are sold. So that means 62,000 to one is the, is the number of dollars invested in gold versus how much gold really exists, which means that even if 1%, that would be 620 people, if they went and claimed try to get their gold, they couldn't because only one out of 620,000, 62,000 really gets the gold. That's why it's so important if you're investing in certain things to have them in your own possession, not your keys, not your coins. Get your coins in your own wallet. Get your silver or gold in your own possession. These things, the, the possession is nine-tenths of the law and probably these days even higher than that. So to combat this problem, that's what Reggie Milton Veritasium is doing. So, so to combat this, this problem, Reggie and Veritasium filed their patent. And that patent was granted in the DeFi space and also for this uh, for this trust transfer. So now Veritasium not only can create a market space like they have on their veritas.veritasium.com and uh, the Vidare marketplace that they've created, but they can also replace these other marketplaces that exist out there where all this fractional banking and rehypothecation exist. So you can actually have true exchanges between people well, what is happening in the DeFi space and also in the, the Uniswap and PancakeSwap and all these other swap sites, these, these decentralized exchanges, these DEXs, that is creating the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace that Reggie postulated, envisioned, saw about to happen, where people can trade to one another and not need an exchange. They don't need that third party. So we don't need that third party, which is going to create these issues and Veritasium can be the source of truth. Um, I went back digging through Veritasium and I found uh, this coin's been around for a long time. I know that Bixweer used to give out a share of Veritasium. 
uh, when for new subscribers. Uh, and he even postulated that it was basically a lottery ticket. Back in the day of 2018, Veritasium was over I mean, pushing $100. The all-time high of Veritasium was over $400. But it since crashed with the SEC issues, which I'll talk about in a moment. But Veritasium is pretty much, even Bix describes it as a lottery ticket. It is uh, an asymmetric market, meaning that the upside is immense. Uh, Cliff High has put out a report in his Alta reports once upon a time said that he envisions that Veritasium could be on par in value with Bitcoin. It was unclear if that meant market cap or price, but either way, that's pretty big. So for a, for the current price of roughly $20 of Veritasium to potentially get something, an asset that could be worth a thousand times more or higher, that is probably a risk that some educated investors, not financial advice, might want to take or gamble on to get, you know, a handful of shares and see what happens. It's worth you know, a couple hundred bucks or more, if you're depending on how much you are willing to um, risk. Again, it could all go to zero, but the upside is pretty high. And Veritasium is a product that's been out there for years, and Reggie Middleton is not going away. So I, I like the product. I think it's got a lot of upside, and I think it's well worth uh, a space on the board. And let's dig into the charts in a little different manner next. So before we delve into the charts, and we need to look at Veritasium in a different way, uh, we need to talk about what happened with the SEC. And Reggie Milton was working with the SEC closely to try to be compliant as best he could. They had Veritasium had an ICO in 2017 where 51 percent of the coins, which is 51 million, were put out as an ICO. Uh, unfortunately, not many people bought them. They were Two dollars a share. I mean, it was two dollars a coin, and not many people bought them. So v Reggie and Veritasium wound up getting a lot of the coins back. So this did not sit well with the SEC for many reasons, and this was a good enough excuse for them for prosecuting Reggie and Veritasium. So they decided to go after them, and not only did um, Reggie have to settle the SEC, pay almost ten million dollars to them, and really decimate his company because he had to give up 98 million of his 100 million coins. So the SEC is sitting on 98 million Veritasium coins right now, and no one quite understands where what the fate is of those coins. They have not been burned. They have not been reissued. They exist, and they're, I guess the SEC has a wallet with a whole lot of Veritasium in it. So the, the speculation is that if there's going to be replacement markets, that the SEC and or the United States would go to Reggie and say, look, let's start a new marketplace based on Veritasium, which you've already proven as a concept and works. Let's replace the current marketplaces, which are rehypothecated and over leveraged and has, lacks truth and use your exchange. Now, that's speculation. That is not facts at all. That is hypothesis. But that is part of the hypothesis that leads to the, the, the realistic expectation that if that were to happen, that's how Veritasium could be worth an immense amount of dollars per coin. So that is really the upside of Veritasium. Not so much the chart, not so much looking at the technical analysis. This is a gut call, um, intelligent lottery ticket, meaning that there's maybe a 1% chance that this happens. But the 1% chance means 1,000x rewards. So upside still outpaces the downside for a 1% gamble. Now, not a gamble, not financial advice. Do not take my opinion as financial advice whatsoever. I am just giving you information on a coin that is off the radar, but for savvy investors that are out there and looking for a coin that has a lot of upside in, in a tumultuous financial world that we live in today, Veritasium could see a very useful use case going forward. Now, I will look at the charts briefly just to give you an idea where it once was. You can see how active this coin was in uh, July 17 all the way to July 19. It was immense. And the big run-up, Veritasium, was $460. Since then, it's really been quiet except for the last six months, which I'll zoom into. And we can see that the volume really picked up after news came out that Reggie got the patent and pretty much owns all of DeFi. And he is looking at how to leverage that intellectual property that he was given that patent for 
against everything else that's going on in DeFi. So there could also be the possibility that everything in the DeFi space, which everyone believes is going to grow immensely, is going to owe a fee of some kind to Veritasium. So there's another way that Veritasium could see a ton of value going up. And this is why Veritasium went from, you know, two or three, two to three to four dollar range back in January up to the $20 range and has been dancing around those numbers in the $15 to $20 range ever since. Um, there was a big buy apparently yesterday where somebody got wind of this and said, I'm going to buy a whole bunch and got it shot up to $37. But for the most part, it's around $20 if you can get it. So I don't want to really d delve too far into the, the charting because there's really nothing to gain from charting this one. This is really a gut feel and upside versus downside asymmetric market risk. So, with that being said, that's uh, that's let's draw our conclusions on Veritasium. So there we have the Veritasium, the rundown, the history. You, you understand some of the the trials and tribulations that Reggie Middleton and his team has had. Um, my original rating score was a little bit harsh because it was more of a home run swing. Um, some call it a lottery ticket. I don't think it's quite that because lottery tickets are often torn up and thrown away after a week. Um, but Fertasium has been around for years, and I think it still has that asymmetric market potential where you can get the coin below $50 now. I, I'm just saying that. I think it's like in the 30s today, but I think it's going to stay below, below 50 for a little while. But when people start to learn like some of the recent decisions that have been made and the international patents that have been awarded to Veritasium for peer-to-peer -peer value tra transfers. Now, peer-to-peer -peer value transfer, I'll go into that after I read the patent further, but in my first blush of understanding what those words, and Reg Reggie's very meticulous about the words he chooses, and I listen intently when he does. Um, he's being very deliberate on what he's saying, and what he's saying in my opinion, this is just my opinion, one guy on the internet, not, not financial advice, all that good stuff. I think that the patents, um, which I think go back to 2014, which predates most projects, except for like, except for maybe I think Litecoin, Bitcoin, maybe Dogecoin, a few others, any value transfer on the blockchain for sure would owe an, a patent infringement licensing right or like, they'd have to reach a deal for licensing with Veritasium. So that would be Ethereum. That would be pretty much any product that's on Ethereum. Any product that's launched in 2015 and beyond, 2014 would be you have to look at the dates. Um, but I think Ethereum and others and everything that's on the Ethereum blockchain, they owe a, a licensing fee and in some way, shape or form to Veritasium because they own the rights for value transfer now. Now, it also extends beyond the cryptocurrency space to other blockchains. So banks and other things that are using blockchains for their purposes would also owe a licensing fee. So for those reasons alone, I think that the rating of my, my two and a half has got to go up to three and a half or maybe even four if you can get this coin. I, and the question is, does the coin still have value? How does that work? What, is the, what does the very token represent? It was originally designed to represent uh, a portion of the value of the intellectual property behind the team at Veritasium, not necessarily the projects. So everybody's still working out the value proposition here, what is owed to Veritasium and what the, the token value is. But... A lot remains to be seen. Uh, it's better than a lottery ticket, but it's not a rock solid project. Like we know that, you know, a top five to 10 coin is going to be around for a while. But if these patents actually hold water, which they seem to do now, and that licensing from other projects that other projects and beyond just crypto, all blockchain projects are going to actually owe licensing fees to Veritasium. There could be a lot of value heading towards the Veritasium project, which could, want, could trickle down to the very token holders. Time will tell. So I'm going to give it a three and a half for now. Uh, I, I, I like it. I will. I, and it's like most of the coins that I talk about. It's not financial advice. All the coins are not financial advice. But like a lot of the coins I talk about, I am also, I own, I own some Verit Veritasium tokens as well. But lots said today. I just wanted to get this Veritasium video out there so everybody can see it, enjoy it, be able to find it now. Uh, now that they all coin up, please over so there you have it for today. I'm going to close the drawer of the bureau and I'll see you next time.